If you've been on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, or pretty much any other platform in the past few days, you probably heard about the recent Next.js security vulnerability that allowed attackers to bypass middleware-based security checks, including authentication and authorization logic. In other words, anyone with a bit of knowledge and the right HTTP header could potentially access routes that were supposed to be protected. Admin dashboards, user settings, or private APIs were all wide open if your app was built with a vulnerable Next.js version and relied solely on middleware for access control. This sounds bad, but as much as we like to complain and blame authors for security issues in frameworks and libraries, the next vulnerability is not the end of the world. On the contrary, the open source ecosystem survived much worse. The problem isn't even the fact that developers are handling authentication and authorization exclusively in the middleware. Of course, best practices tell us to always have layered security, to validate on the server, to never trust the client, and to assume that any layer can fail. We know all these rules. We've read the blog posts, we've watched the conference talks, and we've told junior devs these same things a hundred times. And before you jump to conclusions, no, the issue is not the fact that modern web development relies on frameworks that hide away too much of the complexity. Abstraction is not inherently bad. In fact, it's what allows developers to build more in less time and to focus on solving business problems instead of reinventing the wheel every single time. In my opinion, the real issue is that the simplicity of this vulnerability is a cautionary tale for the times to come. If you've been a programmer for a while, you are used to security vulnerabilities being associated with complex, low-level stuff. Think of buffer overflows, race conditions, deserialization exploits or memory leaks. These are things that live deep in the guts of your system, things that take effort and know how to understand, and even more effort to exploit. But this was a simple, basic HTTP header. No reverse engineering or fancy exploits were needed. All you had to do was to look into the source code, understand that a certain internal header exists, and then realize that Next.js blindly trusted it without verifying where it came from. This was the entire vulnerability. In all fairness, everything around us is slowly turning into the Idiocracy movie. So I think it's fair to assume we are probably six months away from being able to bypass server security via request parameters. Somehow, human software output gets worse and worse, but we expect that the AI which is trained on this work to get better and better. This might sound like a joke, but I'm not really laughing. We are now entering the era of the vibe coder, so if you think things are bad now, you should brace yourselves. The barrier to entry in web development was already low, but now people think they are ready to deploy production apps with no coding skills at all. What could go wrong? We're watching a new generation of developers skip straight past all programming concepts because the tools let them. And to be fair, the tools are impressive. You can spin up a Next.js app in 30 seconds, slap on some Tailwind, add a database with a Prisma schema, deploy it to Vercel, and you are ready to charge your customers a monthly fee. But what happens after that? We are entering an era where companies are cutting IT costs and laying off people in hopes they'll be replaced by AI. So the pressure on humans to output code faster is bigger than ever before. This means nobody is stopping to think about fundamentals anymore. Code quality, security or architecture are now nice-to-haves, not requirements. If it compiles and looks decent in the browser, ship it. And then, this poor performing code will be used to train new AI models, creating a vicious cycle of terrible software we'll all have to learn to live with.